Okay, boxing fans, it's the comeback of e-boxing news. Haha, <laughs> joke. Right, we're going to do a quick little round-up on the whole Liverpool card that's happening this weekend with Bellew, Cleverly, Joshua. They're the main fights we're going to look at. I don't want to look at any of the fights because I don't think they're worth talking about, to be honest. So, we're just going to do that. I'm here with Paul, Paulie Mac, my number Hello. two. How are you doing, Paul? I'm fine. That's cool. And I'm here with Ryan, no holds barred boxing. You okay, Ryan? Good. Yeah, hi. That's good. I'm happy. So, I'm going to start off with Paul. I'm just going to quickly ask you, what do you, what do you make of Eddie's import for Tony Bellew? This someone Dos Santos guy, not Giovanni Dos Santos. Yeah, I think he's called uh, Julio Dos Santos or whatever. Uh, I don't know anything about him. I'm not going to lie. He's an unknown out of South America. I think he, I think he's got a fairly okay record in terms of wins and losses. I remember I only looked at it once a few weeks ago. But yeah, he's he's a guy I don't know anything about. I've not watched him on. I've not watched any of him. So maybe I should have done a bit more homework. But at the end of the day. If the guys, if I've never heard of the guy, then what are the chances that the guy is a world level fighter? There aren't many world level fighters who people don't know about. I don't think he's in the top ten, or anyone's top ten or top fifteen for that matter. So, if Bellew is as good as he says he is, and he's serious about having a go at trying to win a world title in this new division, he's he's got to be winning this fight probably by knockout. Because if he can't beat a guy no one's heard of, then. I don't think he's he's got much of a prayer to beat the likes of the big boys in the division. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, basically, I've looked, I've put a bit of research into this guy, and he's got 26 wins, 23 of which by way of knockout, all at domestic level, all lower level than domestic level in Brazil. So we can assume he's domestically a big puncher, but on the international scene, that's totally up for debate, and I wouldn't even suggest that. Uh, he's not even fought particularly successfully in Brazil, really. I mean, all the guys he's fought, he should be beating. And I don't even think Brazil has a thriving cruiserweight division. He has lost his only competitive fight. And that guy went on to lose to a guy called Ilunga Makubu, who you might remember cleverly was supposed to fight before he pulled out. You know, But that, that, that's basically all we can really tell you about this guy who's been brought in. He's ranked number 11 by the WBO. Don't know how he got that. Pumped up ranking, probably. I'm just going to go over to Ryan now. Do you know anything about this guy? Or is this just one of Eddie's imports, his famous imports? No, I don't know anything about him. Um, it, the, like you said, the guy uh, has fought entirely sort of Brazil-level fighters, um, none of whom looked like they were very good. They were all journeymen and uh, sort of local level fighters. And the only two fighters on his record who who have got decent records or who had decent records, he lost against by decision. So we can we can maybe theorise that he's got a decent chin because um, the two fights that he lost went, you know, the the two good fights that he lost went um, to the decision. But then on the other hand, he's only fought ninety five rounds. He's thirty six years old. So, in theory, Tony Bellew should be stopping the guy. But then, when you fight unknown fighters, you just don't know what's going to happen. So, Bellew should should win comfortably, but, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. That's right. Eddie Hearn's got a, he's got a shocking record when he brings in these imports. I don't know if anybody actually watches them, you know, before they bring them over. All you need to do is look at Ricky Burns. When you, when you, when you think of that, I mean, how many times has he had an import come over and then they give him hell. It happens quite a lot, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, what will we move on to next? Oh, I've just got a good little thought. We'll go back to Paul. Tony Bellew's chin. Do you think he could hold up to the likes of Dos Santos? I mean, at the end of the day, he has got 23 knockouts. It wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. That, as Ryan said, with these unknowns, these guys we don't know about, we've never heard of, we assume the crap, but every now and then you get one who's quite good and one who causes an upset. And it, it wouldn't surprise me if this guy, because he's got nothing to lose, let's face it. If he gets beat by Bellew, so what? Do you, do you know what I mean? We're never, never going to hear from him again, that either way. So if he, um, 
if he's able to hit Bellew with a, with a good shot and knock him down, because Bellew is very, very vulnerable. He, I think he'd be even more vulnerable now that he's gone up a division and he's going to fight bigger punches. It would it'd not surprise me one bit if Bellew does something stupid and gets himself either knocked down or possibly even knocked out, because he, he was nearly knocked out by Rudolph and he had that fight in his back pocket and very nearly lost it. So with Tony, you don't know. He should get. He should beat the Santos fairly easily, based on what I know, which is nothing. But it's also admitted. But yeah, if this guy is able to hurt Bellew, then I wouldn't blink. Yeah, I mean, basically, I think you're spot on there. I mean, he's got to punch his chance to hurt Tony Bellew because realistically. Any recognised puncher has got a decent chance to puncture that defence and give that chin problems. I mean, it does look through him. Realistically, Stevenson is like a super middleweight or a very small light heavyweight. He's not exactly tight at that weight. And he gave him problems. In fact, he knocked him out. Oval McKenzie gave him problems. His chin fits in their first fight. And he's been dropped and didn't look very good against Bob Adjisaf. All that's got to add up. And what it adds to is your man, Tony Bellew's not got a good chin. So, if a guy lands clean, especially at this weight limit, at this higher weight limit, when they're all like, what, almost 200 pounds, you could go. And Tony Bellew, he's not got a good record when it comes to getting punched in the face. So, he could go. Ryan, what are you saying? What do you think about Tony Bellew's chin in this matchup? Do you think Dos Santos has a punch? Well, I mean, his chin has never really looked like it was ever going to be, you know, aside from his loss to Adonis Stevenson, who, let's face it, was probably a, a step too far for Bellew. Um, he's never really been, you know, tested too much. I mean, he went down a couple of times against um, Oval McKenzie, but Bellew was still, you know, domestic level back then. You know, that was for the Commonwealth title. And that was quite a few years ago now. Uh, he arguably beat Nathan Cleverly. Uh, since then, he's beaten guys like Miranda and um, Shalemba. Although I, I think I remember the first fight being probably, you know, uh, uh, fortunate that he got a draw. So I don't think his chin has ever really, you know, looked like it was ever going to let him down too much in a fight. And that guy, like we've already said, the guy he's fighting is, is a good Brazilian level fighter. He hasn't shown any evidence that he's a uh, world-level, you know, puncher, fighter. So I don't think even his punches are going to bother Bellew too much. Interesting, interesting. So we'll just go into prediction now. Just a quick, short, sweet one. Paul, what do you reckon? Tony Bellew to knock this Dos Santos guy out in... I'll go for the sixth round. Ryan, what are you saying? Yeah, same. Just like... Mid mid round stop is somewhere between like five and seven. Yeah, I agree. Between five and seven's a good a good shout. I'll say round eight. In fact, I'll say round eight. Next, we'll go on to Nathan Cleverly. What do you think about Nathan Cleverly, Paul? I know you're probably not his biggest fan. Um, he's fighting a guy called Valori. What can I tell you about him first? Uh, he's not that good. Another famous Eddie's import. Never won a fight outside his own country of Argentina. He's struggling to, to beat guys inside his own country in Argentina. I don't think that Argentina's got a thriving um, cruiserweight division. I've got a feeling he's getting paid pennies. And he's not ranked inside of the top 15 of any of the major governing bodies. In fact, I wouldn't suggest he's any better than the likes of Matty Askin, China Clark, Neil Dawson, Tony Conquest, or Waddy. Well, yeah, he's probably better than Waddy Camacho. But other than, other than the rest, he's probably not better than any of them. What do you think about this fight? Why is he fighting this guy, this bum? Uh, probably because Cleverly, Cleverly was beaten so badly by Kovalev that he's still taking his baby steps, isn't he? At the end of the day, he's got to be fed a few more bums than Bellew has because although Bellew got knocked out as well, you know, it wasn't a horrific knockout, he wasn't absolutely dominated and abused for a couple of rounds like Cleverly was. So, Cleverly still needs to be rebuilt and sort of pick up the pieces of his career because for a long time, no one, no one even knew if Cleverly was ever going to fight again. There was a lot of rumors going around that Cleverly was just going to jack it in and do something else. And obviously, he's been persuaded, or he's decided to 
get put the goals back on and give it another go. Yeah. But, you know, they're obviously going to keep loving for a little while because they know if they put him in with someone really, really good and he loses again, so that might be it for him. And they obviously don't want that. They want to milk him. They want to get the money's worth out of him first. So they brought in this guy who, he's had, what, 20 fights, something like that, and he's lost about four or five of them all in his home country against guys we don't really know. What's that tell you? The guy, as we've said, is pro- if he was British, he probably wouldn't even be the British champion. So I expect cleverly. Cleverly's getting an easy, getting an easy fight. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd sort of disagree with the, with the first part. I mean, I don't know why he deserves, you know, kid treatment. Uh, oh, I, I well, I've got to agree with that. It's happening, but I don't know why. I mean. You know, I understand that he got battered by Kovalev and that, but he didn't, well, he, he did get knocked out. I wouldn't say he didn't take any punishment, but he's still got a good chin. He had a better chin than Bellew before, and I don't, I don't suspect it, it's any worse now. And he looks better as cruiserweight than Bellew, in my opinion. He looked great, you know, in, in terms of when he came into the ring and battered that other guy, Corbin. So, I don't know. Ryan, what do you think about this fight? What, who's this guy? He's fighting. What do you reckon about this fight? Well, I've checked his record, and the only uh, good win on his record was his win against uh, Orhelio Omar Rossi, who went six rounds with Marco Huck. So, and and he stopped this guy stopped Rossi in six rounds himself. So, aside from that win, he doesn't have any uh, big names on his record. He, he he's got stoppage wins against guys who are like you know domestic level fighters out there. Uh, he's been stopped like you know three times or something. So Nathan cleverly should be beating this guy early on. He should be winning comfortably. There's there's nothing aside from the the obvious you know danger scenario because you don't know who someone is. Aside from that, there's no reason cleverly shouldn't be easily winning this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Here's another question I've got for you both. Uh, it's quite an interesting question, considering both guys are fighting. Well, guys not that good, you know, guys who are contenders in their own domestic area, but they're not in good domestic, you know, divisions in their country. Why are they not fighting the British contenders? Do you think, let's not talk about, let's not talk about Box Nation versus Sky, let's, let, let's just forget that, okay? Do you think that they should fight the likes of Tony Conquest, Matty Askin, Dickinson, Oval McKenzie, so let's say that again, for, for Cleverly. Do you think they should fight them instead of these these imports, Paul? I, I'd like to see that personally. But the reason they don't is probably because they're too snobby. They think they're above the likes of those fighters when reality is they're in a new division and they've done nothing in this new division to suggest they are better than those two, all those guys you just named. I'd like to see either one of them fight Simmons, Stephen Simmons. He got a good win up the other, the other, uh, the other week against Camacho. But I think Bell, you said after he knocked out Brudov, oh, I've, I've done the British scene, I've won the British title, I don't want to go back to that, so I'm not interested in fighting the, the British cruiserweights. Well, you know, that's all well and good, Tony. You did the British scene at, at light heavyweight. You're now in cruiserweights. You're basically starting all over again, pretty much. So... You can't just turn your nose up at these fights just because you fought at well level in a previous division. You've got, you're moving up a division after a loss. You're basically going to have to start all over again, and you've got no right. This goes for Cleverly as well. You've got no right to think you're better than anyone else in this new division. That's my opinion. So I'd like to see them fight these British guys and work their way up, but obviously I think that both of them think that they're, that they're above the likes of doing that, unfortunately. What do you think, Ryan? Do you have anything to add on to that? Yeah, I agree. Um, they they should really be fighting domestic fighters. If they're fighting at domestic level anyway, they just happen to be fighting domestic level, you know, foreigners like South Americans and whatever. I mean, I'm happy for the South Americans because you know they're they're getting a chance. It's probably their biggest payday they'll ever have. So they've got to take the fight. If they're offered to them, they've got to take them, or they're crazy. But but they probably shouldn't be getting offered the fights in the first place because there's plenty of British fighters out there who would be glad to fight the likes of Bellew and Cleverly. 
So I do think that there's probably not a ducking, any ducking going on from their point of view, but there might be a bit of ducking from their promoter's point of view. You know, like, why bother fighting one of these tough fighters like Oval McKenzie, who we all know can, like, you know, give you your toughest fight of your career. I mean, he did twice against um, Bellew. But, you know, maybe in, it should be something like McKenzie versus Cleverly and, like, Bellew versus Simmons or, um, you know, uh, Matty Askin or something. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to have seen them, you know, just run straight through the, you know, the domestic division. And I, I believe they could have both done it. They could have both just run through a lot of them. Over McKenzie would be the toughest fight, obviously. That would be a really good fight. But... You know, it's unfortunate. It's a joke. This is this is what it is nowadays. They just think that they're above it, above everyone else by merit. You know, they've not. At the end of the day, they've not done nothing in the division. And like you said, Ryan, they're fighting foreign. They're, they're fighting foreign guys who are either at the same level or below. Uh, why can't they give the shot to the British guy? Give him a bit of exposure on TV, and you know, give him the opportunity. No, we will just bring in one of Eddie's imports instead. It's annoying. That's what it is. Uh, but what's your expectation for Cleverly. Uh, did we say this, Paul? Uh, I think Cleverly will... I think he'll probably get the stoppage in around six or seven. Again, I, he's not as big a puncher as Bellew. I think, he, you know, he's not a one... He hasn't got a massive one-shot pilot. I think he'll just break the guy down and maybe the guy will retire on his stool after six or seven rounds or something like that. Ryan, what are you saying? Well, yeah, like, um, you know, that could be true. All I know is that Cleverly should be winning this within three rounds. That's what should happen, whether it does or not, I don't know. But if he doesn't win within three rounds, then that's quite bad. I mean, when you consider that the other guy, you know, taking away his loss in his first fight, which I just read, which was in a round, take that one away because it was his first fight. He's, you know, he's lost to guys in like four rounds and whatever. So... Cleverly, even without his, you know, massive punching power, he's got a win within three. Yeah, I actually agree. I think he'll do it in four, though. I mean, honestly, I think this guy's going to be garbage. I think he'll come over, he'll have a jump around the ring for a bit, he'll take a few punches. He may survive the first round, and I think maybe second or third, he'll get battered, go for the steak dinner, and count the few, like, the £2,000 that he gets from well, from Eddie here and then get to get the next flight home. Honestly, that's what I think will happen. I, I, honestly, don't pass go. Collect your 200 quid. Boom. Off. We'll just go through one more fight before we call this a day. And we'll just call it Joshua versus Skelton. Paul, do you, what, what do you think about this fight? Do you think it's a good fight or not? No, not at all, to be honest. I know people are going to say, oh, Joshua's... Not that far in his career. Joshua's only has half a dozen fights, and Skelton's been around a while. Give him a test. Come on, Matt Skelton. How old is he? Forty-seven, forty-eight. He's been he's been he's been beat on so many times. How many times can you flog a dead horse? How much blood can you get out of a stone? Skelton. I think he last fought over a year ago against John McDermott, which he lost. So and inactivity at his age is going to be even worse. And before that loss to McDermott, he got pretty much obliterated by David Price. What Skelton? Uh, I respect Matt Skelton. You know, he's a he's a tough guy. He's been around a long time and he's done himself proud. But come on, let's have it right. He's he's taking this fight because he's getting the payday. Ske- um, Josh was taking this fight because he's been told to take this fight. Eddie Hearns made this fight so everyone could just give Anthony Joshua a clap when he. Probably not Skelton out. I don't think it's that good a fight. I think there's better fights for Joshua. At the end of the day, Sky can't be jumping on this big Joshua bandwagon and hyping him up as this big, great next superstar, this next Lennox Lewis. They can't be saying all this stuff about him and putting him in with tomato cans, which unfortunately I think is what, which is pretty much all he's fought so far. Mm-hmm. Ryan, you're usually the defender of mm-hmm. can fighters and stuff like and cabby haters and stuff like that so what are you thinking about this fight yeah i i like it <laughs> i defended it uh, no i do like it because i mean 
Joshua, he's only been fighting for uh, about eight eight months, something like maybe nine months. So he's, he's still in his first year as a pro. Um, this will be his seventh fight. It's against definitely his best opponent to date because, I mean, you know, he's only been fighting guys who are, you know, still journeyman level. He's young. He's got lots to learn. I agree with Paul saying that um, it, it, it's the fault of the um, people, you know, Eddie Hearn bigging him up. That's the fault. It's um, the whole bigging him up or whatever. But to be fair, I don't think he's been bigged up anywhere near as much as, say, like, Audley Harrison was, like, a decade ago or just over. Um, I think that he still needs to beat this level of opponent for about another six to 12 months. Um, there's there's lots of other fighters in that sort of... In that sort of um, uh, Skelton region, you know, we've got uh, Michael Sprott. That would be another sort of similar level. Uh, Martin Rogan, maybe, although I think he is like, you know, um, past it now. Sam Ste- Sexton would be good. John McDermott. I mean, like John McDermott would probably be a better opponent because even though I, I think John McDermott would be guaranteed to be knocked out by Joshua, whereas Skelton is sort of next to guaranteed to be knocked out. McDermott did just come off of a win over Skelton, so he would he would in theory uh, deserve the fight more. But I'd like to see um, Joshua in against you know Sprott, Lewison, uh, maybe someone like Tom Dallas. That would be good. Cole Baker, guys like that in the next sort of year, and then he can make the the transition at you know in a year's time to European level fighters. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. Personally, I don't mind the fight. I think it's a good fight. You know, what's Skelton got? He's got experience. He's a tough guy. That's about it right now. I mean, he, you know, he's real old now. I mean, he's never been young, but he's real old now for a boxer. Mm. And he don't have it. He doesn't really have it anymore in terms of offense. But he'll, he'll pose like a, a, an early threat, I assume. I think he'll have a go. But, yeah, I think, he, I think it'll be a good fight. Bit of perspective, though. This isn't the same... Matt Skelton, the fought Chigayev in 2008 for the world title. It's not going to be... The, it's not even the same guy who fought David Price, really. I mean, he's a year older, a lot more inactive, you know, coming off a loss against a guy who he'd knocked out previously in his prime in one round. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good fight for his, what, seventh, sixth or seventh fight. It's okay for that. Once he gets past ten, uh-uh. Can't be fighting that type of caliber anymore. It's got to be mm. British title contenders all the way until you move on to European level or the world level. But the question is, will Eddie do that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not Eddie. But if past experience is anything to go by, he'll get a lot of cans. But yeah, uh, do we really need a? Um, yeah, we'll just do a quick prediction. Paul, what are you saying? I think after about three or four rounds, um, Skelton's trainer, whoever they are, will probably just throw in a towel and pull him out. I think Skelton's a proud fella and he's a tough fella. And I, don't, I can't see him um, getting carried out on the stretcher. I can't see um, Anthony Joshua just beating him to, knocking him flat on his back and knocking him unconscious or hurting him so bad that he goes down and can't get up again like David Price did. Because although Josh was got power, you know, he, he hasn't got power like Price, so I think it'll be a case of Joshua basically just beats him up for a couple of rounds, his train will think, what on earth is the point of this Matt's not going to win, we're just letting him take shots for nothing, we've got our money, let's go home, they'll probably wave it, throw the towel in, after the uh, I'll go for three rounds mm-hmm. What are you saying, Ryan? Yeah, same, within three rounds, I actually think he'll knock him out in about the second, I think it'll be um He'll be he'll be looking to make a statement like the way that David Price made a statement against Skelton. I think he'll be looking to sort of beat him quicker than David Price did. So I, I can see Joshua within two rounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it depends how he fights. If he goes out there and works the body, he could end it whenever. If he tries to take him out to the top, it could, you know, to the face, like, he could end up going a few rounds and... You know, everyone has got a plan until they get in there. He, he probably is, he's probably a young guy. Well, he is a young guy. He doesn't get paid over time. He'll go in there and he'll probably try and knock him out. And he'll, after round one, he'll realise, hmm, he's got a good chin. I'll go for the body. And he'll take him out to the body in round two. I think honestly think round two. 
Thanks for listening, guys. Tell us what you think about the... F- oh, we're not going through any other fights that are on. They're all shite. <laughs> Tell us what you think about these fights, but we know that a lot they're all shite. But if you're going, I hope you enjoy yourself. See you later.